Okay, so this video is going to step you through Excel 11. Um, the file you need is in the 11 uh, assignment, so you'll download that. It, the file is called the products table. Um, you're going to select the numbers here under quantity sold. And this is kind of like what we did um, in Excel 10. We're going to hit copy and then we're going to do paste values so that we don't have random numbers that change every time we do something. Um, so we've got that. Now step three says format all of the data as a table. That's something you haven't done before. It was introduced in the quiz so hopefully it's not a totally foreign concept but I need to select from A1 over to column F and down to um, row 117. I'm going to choose format as table and I can pick whatever style I like so I'm just gonna go with that one it's gonna say where's your data and I it I already since I already selected it that comes up there and I have my data has headers headers are the the first row of the column that tells what's in that column we have that so I'm gonna click OK All right so that is step three um, I don't need to do anything more with discover more about your data now we want to add a table, or sorry, a column to our table to calculate profit. Um, this column should be between selling price and quantity sold. So I'm going to click on quantity sold. Okay. I'm going to go to the home ribbon. I'll choose insert, and I'm going to say insert sheet columns. It will insert a column to the left of where I have selected. This column is going to be called um, going to be called profit profit and I'm so I type that in and press enter and we're going to calculate the profit in this column so I'm going to type equal and the profit is selling price minus cost okay now you might notice it says instead of the cell reference it's actually using the column heading that's a table feature that's a function of tables when you format it as a table you don't just get this pretty look you get additional functionality and when I press enter watch something really cool is gonna happen it's gonna fill it to the rest of the um, table so I've got uh, I don't have to do drag that all the way down to the bottom it's just gonna put that in there now I need to add another column between quantity sold and store ID so again I'm gonna collect select G I can choose insert if I or right click and choose insert um, there or I can do it the same way I did the other one this one is actually going to be called total profit Okay. and the total profit is calculated by multiplying so start with my equal the profit times the quantity sold and I can press enter and again it's gonna fill that all the way down to the bottom so format all numbers appropriately that is nope sorry skipped a step step six is add a total row to your table so what I mean here is we're gonna use again another table feature I'm not gonna go down to the bottom and do a sum I'm gonna click on anywhere in the table click on the table design ribbon and I'm gonna click this box that says total row so I'm gonna let Excel do the work for me and down here on this total row now I don't all I have to do um, let's see I want to use uh, totals for profit so under this column down here I'm gonna click in this cell when I do I'm gonna see a little drop down and I'm gonna choose sum and I want to calculate totals for quantity sold so again I'm gonna click here and choose sum and I want to do uh, total profit so I will click in this cell click on the drop down choose sum and I want to count the product name that's over here so again I'm gonna choose that and I'm gonna choose count and it will automatically total everything for me so I don't need to highlight and select and put in functions and do all of that stuff it's just choosing from the drop down it says format all numbers appropriately um, okay um, and pretty much everything except quantity sold is um, currency cost and selling price and profit so I would select those three columns there make that currency let's see what did I say currency 
Okay, I didn't specify decimal places. Oops, I did quantity sold too. That's okay. We will come over here, select profit, make that one currency, and then I'll come back here to quantity sold, and I will make that back to general. So that way I am um, back. So my numbers are formatted. So now what I have in here is store ID, but I don't know where a AL6 is. So I actually want to replace the store ID with the city um, that the, um, the store ID represents. So I'm going to come over here to find and select. I'm going to choose replace. I'm going to sell, tell it to find AL6 and I want it to replace that, as you can see in the table, with Allentown. Okay, and I will hit replace all. You want to be a little bit careful if you have something that might turn up. I'm um, going to click OK. Somewhere else. So if it was just AL, not AL6, then that might show up over here in this column, like basketball, and it would replace um, the AL in basketball with Allentown. So it would actually say basketball and town all shorts. So you want to be careful, but I set this up not to be tricky, so um, you are safe to just use replace all. Um, DE2 is Decatur, D-E-C-A-T-U-R, and again I'm going to use replace all, and I have to do for each of these, so KP1, oops, ah, yeah, I did that, okay, K, K, P1 is King of Prussia and replace all and uh, RI, that's an I by the way, 5 is Richmond, replace all and TA4 is T A L L A H A S S E E, Tallahassee. Replace all. And W I, again, another I. 3 is Wilmington. And replace all. Okay, so now we have all. I can close that. I can fix my column width. And now I have city names instead of store IDs. Um, it's now a location instead of a store ID, so I'm going to change that so it says store location instead of store ID. And now we're going to create some pivot tables, so that's pretty cool. Pivot tables are a way of aggregating your data so that it um, you can see it in different ways. So to do my data table, I'm just going to click anywhere in the table. Um, the table is treated by Excel kind of as a, as a group, as an entity. I'm going to go to Insert, and I'm going to choose Pivot Table, that very first field on the left. It's going to ask me to select a range. I already have it, so that's my table one. And I'm going to tell it I want it on a new worksheet, and I'm going to click OK. And I'm ready to set up my tab pivot table. Um, so we want to look at the total profit and quantity sold by city. So to do that, um, I'm going to click on the um, store location there, and that's got my cities. And then I'm and it should come up under rows. If it doesn't, drag it to rows. These things move around. See, I can do it like that. Um, and I can just drag it to new locations to change the way things want. Um, and the values are total profit. So I'll click on total profit and quantity sold. So that should come up over here in the little box called values. If it doesn't, again, drag it to a new location. Um, and that is literally a pivot table right there. You know how much profit each store location made and you know how many items they sold. It aggregates it. It's very, very simple. Um, that probably was a little easier than we did in the um, 10 with the average if and the sum if and all of that. Now I need to format it. These are dollars so I can go here and I can make that currency. Um, these are not dollars so I'll make that one comma and we don't need anything after the decimal place on that because it's we're not going to sell a fraction of an item. So that's one thing. 
but I also want to use conditional profit uh, formatting. I want to know which store had the highest profit. Now, can I look at that list? Sure, I can look at that and see which one's highest, but it might change. Um, if I just highlight the one that's highest, it may change to, um, you know, a, a different store depending on if we update our data. So I want Excel to do the thinking for me. I'm going to go to conditional formatting. I'm going to go to top and bottom rules. I'm actually going to choose top 10 items, but I don't want the top 10. I just want, oops, let's go this way, the highest one. Okay. And again, I can pick the fill I want. Um, so if I do that um, like that, make it nice and green, click OK. And I, I said, I don't really care what you format it as, but it's highlighted. And if the number swapped, it would still automatically highlight um, the biggest number. So that's the first pivot table. So even though they seem scary, that was really pretty easy. If you think about what you want, um, it's, it's not hard to set up at all. So now we're going to do another pivot table. In this case, we're going to go to click anywhere in the table, click pivot table, new sheet. Again, just put it on its own sheet. It doesn't need to be combined um, for that. And in this case, we want to know how many items we have in each price range. And we want to look at the price range in increments of 10. So we're doing it a little bit backwards from what typically would be done. Um, what we want is the selling price to actually be our row label. That's not typical. Typically, you would do math with that. So it would, if you clicked on it, Excel would stick it in values. So I'm just dragging it to rows because that's where I want it. And then the product ID, I'm going to take that one and I'm going to drag that to values. Again, you typically wouldn't calculate with something like an ID or a product name, um, but we're going to because we're going to count it. Okay, and then we're going to sum. So now I have this set up. I'm just going to press the down arrow. So I'm sitting on one of the numbers. Um, I just have a number selected for the row labels. I'm going to come up here to group selection and I'm going to tell it to start at zero. And you can leave the ending. It just goes to the biggest possible number. And I want to group it by tens. So not a hundred. Okay, but uh, ten. And I'm going to click OK. And now what I have is a table that tells me for items that cost between zero and ten dollars I sell 26 of them. Uh, if it costs between ten and twenty dollars I sell 24 of them. There's 14 that cost between 20 and 30. So pretty cool. Took almost no time to do that. That would be a lot more work um, for you to figure that out by yourself. Okay so that's the pivot tables. That's all you have to do with that one. We're going to come back here to the product sheet. <coughs> Um, and now we want it to print um, and we want each store on its own sheet which means we need to sort it and if you read the directions I'm actually telling you I want to sort, sort by store location but within store location I want to sort by total profit that's not hard to do it's a multi-level sort okay so we're gonna come up here um, we don't have to select it because it's a table but I'm gonna go to custom sort Okay, and it will automatically select that table for me. If we didn't have it formatted as a table, I would need to highlight that range first. I'm going to tell it to sort by total prof. Nope, sorry, just kidding. I'm going to tell it to sort sort by store location. So it will sort that. That's the primary sort key. Um, and then I'm going to add a level and I'm going to tell it to sort by total profit. I want that to be largest to smallest. Now what that's going to do is anytime it finds a tie in store location, it will sort on total profit. So when I click OK, you'll see here's all the Allentown stores and then within Allentown it's sorted by total profit. And then it switches and starts over with the big number indicator for all of the ties. Okay, so that's going to let us put page breaks in. If I do file print right now, so we can get a sense of what it looks like. All right, I have six pages. It doesn't all fit on one page. Okay, column width wise. And once I get past the first cable, first page, I have no idea what each column represents. So we're going to come back here. I'm going to go to page layout and I'm going to change my orientation to landscape. Okay, now based on that little dashed line there, I know now that it, widthwise it will all fit on one page. If yours doesn't, you might need to adjust some column widths or margins, but uh, otherwise you should be okay for that. Now, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here and on the first row, 
but in the leftmost column, column A, um, but right at the end of Allentown, um, the first row of Decatur, the next door, I'm going to go to breaks and I'm going to insert a page break. So that will force it to break on that and I will come down here and again in column A on the first row of the next store location which is King of Prussia I'm going to insert a page break and I will go through and do that for each of these first row for Richmond, the first row for Tallahassee, and the first row for Wilmington. And yeah, Wilmington is my last store. Okay, so now if I do a file print, I've got that looks great, that all one store on one page. I'm going to come to the next one, and I have no idea what those columns are. So we need to fix that problem. That's an easy fix. So scroll back up to the top. I'm going to come to this called Print Titles, this button right here. I'm going to tell it rows to repeat at top. I'll click in there and then I'll click on row one. Okay, just want that first row and then I'm actually going to hit Print Preview because that's a shortcut and I will show you now. Our column heading row will appear on each page um, for our printout. Okay, so that's um, that and then the last thing we want to do I said your company um, you know again just pick a random company um, we will insert our header and footer and um, you'll see add a header to your spreadsheet with the date so we'll come down here and um, use that current date button to add the date then we'll go to footer and we will um, add over here, prepared by, colon, and put your name. Okay. Um, and that should do it. Again, a quick print preview. And that looks good. So you're ready to save and submit.